Before you begin a next cube disassembly, you will need a 7mm socket driver, an M3 hex driver, a small flathead screwdriver or other form of small pry bar, possibly a Phillips head screwdriver, a piece of soft foam about the size of the front of the next cube, and a static mat. Remember to keep yourself grounded to reduce the risk of circuitry damage. Since the next cube is dismantled entirely from the back, it is best to sit the case face down on the foam for ease of access while protecting the faceplate and badge. Using the hex driver, we can loosen the four screws on the back plate. These screws are captive, so you don't have to worry about them falling out. After the four screws are loose, the back plate pulls straight up. Don't pull too hard, as the case fan's power cable must be disconnected before the back plate can be set aside. The motherboard is removed by holding the metal frame and pulling straight up. Before the board can be pulled all the way out, the two ribbon cables for the hard drive and optical drive must be disconnected. Don't pull the ribbon cable itself, make sure to grab both sides of the connector. The drive cables are then disconnected from the drives and the toroids are pulled straight up off of the drive cage. The drive cage and power supply are held in by two hex head screws underneath the power supply. To ease extraction, two finger holds have been added to the top of the drive cage. The case is then sat upright and the finger holds are used to pull the cage and power supply straight out. Be careful not to twist as you pull to avoid damaging the backplane. In the case there are four plastic card guides. Note that the two with the vents are at the bottom. They are removed by pushing gently down on the clips with a small flat head screwdriver and pulling the card guide off the metal. When reassembling, the card guides have two guide posts that go into corresponding guide holes in the front of the case. The top is then clipped into the lip at the back. Once all four card guides are removed, use the socket driver to remove the four structure rods. Each rod is threaded at both ends, one into a nut and the other into the front of the case itself. So if one of the nuts comes off instead of the entire rod, that is not a problem. At this point in the disassembly, the wire dust cover is just friction fit into place and can easily be removed. From here, the case slips apart into its three discrete sections. The back plane is held in by three hex screws and guide posts. Remove the screws and lift the back plane straight up. The faceplate is separated into two sections. The false front for a second optical drive, removable by the two center screws, and the main faceplate held in by the four outer screws. The stuck rods could be removed with a soft cloth and a pair of pliers, but even then there is a small risk of irreparable damage. The feet are removed using the hex head driver, completing the case disassembly. The drives are removed from the drive cage by disconnecting the power from the back of the drives and then unscrewing the drive screws. The drives are then pulled from the cage in much the same way as average computer towers. During reassembly, note that the drive screw holes are labeled with an O and an H, letting you know where the optical drive needs to be screwed in to align with the front panel. The power supply is then separated from the cage by unscrewing the four hex head screws at the top of the power supply. During reassembly, after screwing back in the drives, loosen the screws for the power supply and let it settle for easier reinstallation. The smaller hard drives have a 5.25 inch bay to 3.5 inch drive adapter that has two screws on either side. Please note that the hard drive was not installed by default in the next cube, so this part of the disassembly may vary. And thus, the disassembly of the next cube is complete.